Hi, hi, Warren. Uh, George Kelly called us in. Uh, wants to waive the 24-hour rule, make it our jurisdiction, at least informally. The guy in the pajamas is Mr. Berger. He owns a place. Mr. Berger, this is Special Agent Stanton of the FBI. Mr. Berger? I don't believe you're stealing your own diamonds. Least of all, not in your pajamas. Why the heck don't you tell us what's going on here? This is my store. I was taking some diamonds home. My diamonds. You have no right to be here. I want to leave now. Do you usually take two pounds of diamonds home with you like this? I can do whatever I like with my own stones. I want to leave right now. Mrs. Berger is listed as co-owner. Why don't we call her and have a meet us downtown? No, no. You mustn't do that. Please, don't do that. Please. Where is your wife, Mr. Berger? <laughs> Please, for God's sake, help me. He made us watch him kill our dog. He said it would kill my wife next. Mrs. Berger, please don't be alarmed. You're going to be all right. I'm here with your husband. Now, please, let me speak with the man there with you. Mrs. Berger? Yes. Hit the lights. This is Special Agent Stanton of the FBI. You can see that the house is completely surrounded. We have Mr. Berger and the diamonds in our custody. I'm going to give you some instructions. If you follow them exactly, no harm will come to you. Understand? Tell the police to hold their fire. I'm sending out the maid with a message for you. OK. Oh, you're fired. No deal. You got no choice, Stanton. She's got 30 seconds left. Who's your best sharpshooter? I am. Good. You're gonna have to nail this guy before he gets to that Mercedes. you requested are in the car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Civilian CB radio fast. Just plug this into the cigarette lighter. We've banned all CB use on channel 30 for two hours. He spots one of our tails, and we've had it. Tell them not, not to give any chances. Right. Standard. Do you have the diamonds? Yes. Good. Now move your people back. If anyone beside you tries to follow me, I kill the woman. They're moving back now. That's our second time around the block. The dumb bastard's lost. No, he's not. He's just trying to shake our tail. I think he's going to double back towards the water. Get your police boats ready and alert the Coast Guard. He's got to have a boat waiting for him. Try lining up a shot out the window over my shoulder. Stay low. Absolutely sure, take a shot, but only if you're absolutely sure. Send Mrs. Berger to me. Bullshit. I know you've got a sniper waiting there for me somewhere. I'm gonna keep Mrs. Berger right here in front of me. Now you throw me those goddamn diamonds. Jesus Christ, that's as far as you can throw. Get back to your car. Oh! 
Yes. You made this a hell of a lot harder than it had to be. Now I've handcuffed Mrs. Berger to the end of the pier. You wait for my signal. Then you move in and pick her up. Understand? Understood. Flight 005, San Francisco to Paris, the one with the unidentified passenger? Yes. A 12-year-old girl traveling on her mother's passport. Okay. Let's check the flights that left after we covered the airport, just in case our boy slipped through. The only makeable prints belong to the maid and the family. And the lab will have the fiber analysis for us in a few hours. Okay. Thank you. What have you got? I've pulled out every kidnap extortion in the last five years. 267 possible matchups with our M.O. It's as narrow as the computer goes with the information we have. Then use the telephone. Call the investigating officer in each of those cases. Tell him what we have and see if anything strikes a chord. We don't have the manpower to recheck the airports and make those phone calls. Round up eight other agents. That's 27 phone calls apiece. Start with homicides. He used a 9 millimeter automatic. Check that against the suspect's profile. Caucasian, male, 20 to 40. I promise you, this guy's killed before. It was too easy for him. It's been 12 hours. I think you should shut it down and get some sleep. I feel fine. You feel like shit. Look, I read all the reports. There's no possible way you could have figured out what was going to happen last night. What are you saying, Charlie? I'm saying that it happens. It happened to me. Remember that kid in Sausalito? Look, sometimes you lose a hostage and there's not a damn thing you can do about it. I know the speech, Charlie. I wrote it. Come on, walk me out. Warren, you're letting this thing get to you. You're taking it to heart. You're saying, maybe I could have done this, maybe that. The point is, you did everything correctly, and that's all anyone can ask of you. Now go home, get some sleep. I'll call you when I get to D.C. Okay. Have a nice trip. We've started doing those phone calls now. Good. You want us to call you at home? I'm not going home. I'll be right here.
morning. Nice day for fishing. I guess we must be the first ones here, huh? Yes, I know it's happened before. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I didn't call the restaurant. But we've been in the middle of a terrible situation. Yes, I'm sure it was terrible for you, too. I'll try. No, I can't promise, but I will try. Baby, I gotta go. Bishop Falls, Washington Sheriff reports murder of a tourist just off the highway into Canada. So, large caliber wound through the victim's left eye. Where the hell is Bishop's Falls? It's right over here, uh, to the northwest of Spokane. Book me on the next flight to Spokane, and while I'm in the air, figure out a way to get me to Bishop's Falls. Crilly here found the body. Agent Stanton, Austin Crilly. Stanton's the FBI man, Crilly. It's up this way. Are you really a dream man? Last I looked. Yeah, well, I'm a caretaker hereabouts. And Jeez, since the mine closed, Crilly. yeah, I'm getting to it, Dave. This whole scene where the gate was bent up there, just went to snooping around, and Judas Priest, there's this body lying there. Flies as big as Chevy's. And... What do those cars belong to, Mr. Crilly? What? Sporting folks, uh, fishermen, head out from here and gather above. See, the guide meets him up above at a base camp, Bishop Falls Guide Service. Jonathan Knox and Sarah Rennell. You really a G-man? See, this area is known to be the greatest high mountain fly fishing in the world. That's how he found it. Buck naked and his eyes shot out. He was killed outside, then dragged in here by his heels. The killer wrapped this around the victim's head before pulling off his clothes. Why would he do that? He didn't want to get any bloodstains on the garment. We have to assume the murderer wore the victim's clothes out of here, right down to the end of it. Holy shit. Hey, don't stop that. What? What's that? Burnt hair. What does that mean? All we know about our boy is that he has long hair and a beard. And this is it. Sam! Sam! Howdy, Sheriff. What's the matter? You look all shook up. Sam, we need a description of those men who left in that fishing party from the mine yesterday. Oh, I don't know any of them by sight. Why? You don't meet these people? No, not often. Well, they go straight to the staging area above the mine. Is there something wrong? How many are up there in this party? Five fishermen, one guide. Sarah, Sarah and Al. Dave, what's going on? Can we contact them? This Sarah, does she carry a radio? No, no, there's radios in the huts along the way. Yeah, they were supposed to call me from Timber Falls. And they didn't. They could be anywhere in here. See, sometimes they go into places nobody's been before. Jonathan will know. And the border is just there. That's right. I've got the county fire and rescue chopper standing by. No. That would tip the killer off that we're searching for. Too dangerous. I couldn't use a helicopter even if you wanted. A storm coming in. Too much wind shear. And no roads. Not the one. Who could guide me in there? John Knox is the man you want. He's Sarah's partner, I guess you call him. 
Mr. Stanton, please. Listen, Sarah, yeah, she's kind of special around here. Do you really think he'd kill any more of those people? Yes, I do, Mr. Baker. Imagine living your whole life out here so far away from people. Well, it's a good thing there's a godforsaken wilderness somewhere, because it's the only place that John Knox would fit in. Just what I need, another psycho. Ah, oh, John's all right. He's just different. He doesn't feel real comfortable with people. Lived back in those hills like a hermit. Then Sarah came along. In about five minutes, they fell in love. Fell in love? That makes things more complicated. Stand of the FBI in San Francisco with me. Mr. Knox, I know this is a difficult time for you, but I think we can work together and we... Mr. Knox, I'm in pursuit of a kidnap and murder suspect. I need a guide. Get your hand off me. I understand you're the best. Find someone else. Now, you listen to me, Knox. You are going with me. If you refuse to assist a federal agent in the pursuit of a felon, you will be arrested for obstruction of justice. Get out of my way. You're under arrest. Bullshit. You have the right to remain silent. Move. I go alone. John, the man has the right. He ain't gonna make it out there, Dave. He's only gonna get in my way. Don't bet on it. There ain't no elevators out there, mister. No cable cars, no buses, no damn taxi cabs. So why don't you settle your ass at the motel and I'll do what I do best? Mr. Knox, you've got one choice, and one choice only. That is to guide me into those mountains. That is the one way, the only way, you will be permitted to help your friend. You're not a vigilante. You will be acting under my authority, under my orders. Question so far? Good. And I don't give a rat's ass whether you like it or not. You try going after this guy alone, and your ass will be in jail so fast your head will spin. Is any of this getting through to you, Mr. Knox? Where's this gear? My truck. Powered heated socks. Latest thing. Had Miller selling this stuff? Yeah. Figures. How about you? You know, business, this and that, you make a buck. Like what? Over the counter? Wholesale? Computer sweat? Hey, you make a buck. Who gives a shit? I'm just asking the guy what he go, does. Go, go, go. I have an inquiring mind. Like maybe else, the guy like plays the or something. Okay, you guys, we're going to stop here for a five-minute break. Take off your packs and relax a while. You guys look a little winded. I want you to stop before you can't talk without gasping for air, OK? How about a 55? Hey, Ben, don't get so close to the edge there. Oh, it's not a good oh, place oh, to go oh, river around. Oh, you know what I'm saying, man. I can't get this thing. 
Time my knee felt like this. It rained for three straight days. <laughs> Best fishing though in the rain. My last trip, I latched onto a river. It was full of the biggest steelhead you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> you know how spooky steelhead are, huh? Oh yeah, yeah. Slice of the sound and they're gone. Now is this gonna be another wild fish story, Ben? That's right, my friend. And on this okay, particular Lord? day, it was coming down in buckets. Uh where where was this? What? Where was it? What 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 river? It was the the Fraser, up in B.C., British Columbia. Anyway. So uh, you've never been on one of these trips, huh? No, no. I always figured the wilderness was the botanical gardens in the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> what brings you on this trip now? I just. Finished going through really ugly divorce. And I was looking for a vacation spot where I was sure I wouldn't run into my ex. And since she's never been away from room service for more than a minute in her life, you picked a great spot. <laughs> the sound of the water is kind of lulling the steelhead, and the action on the river is kind of bringing them up close to the surface. How big do these uh, Fraser River steel they get, huh? What's it with you and the question? <laughs> <laughs> this big, okay? Does that make you happy? Can I go on with the story? <laughs> back any time. You worry about your own ass. Hmm? What's happening? There's a trail for you, partner. She's taking the route to Ryan's Gorge. The horses can't make it there. Good. If I never see 
another horse. If I never ride another horse. If I never smell another horse. No offense, horsey. It would be too soon. Hey, I ain't taking no tenderfoot trails. So you might as well turn back right now. Maybe you're forgetting what I said back then. This man is mine, you understand? Now, what do we do with the horses? In the stream of it. What'd you say? Helps break them in. Walk them out wet. You bullshitting me, right? Weird shit. I said I hate the damn woods. Looking at that moss like he's gonna sing to you. Or are you saying your prayers? Come on, will you? Look, mister, you might be some hot shit on your turf, but this is my territory. So why don't you just sit back and enjoy the ride? See the moose? So, the doctor hears this terrible Another statement. doctor. He runs back into the examining room. He Leave takes one guy. look and he says, No, no, nurse. I told you to prick his boil. Oh, I heard that when I was 12. I heard that when I was 12. All right, I got another one. Uh, the old man. No, 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 Ralphie. No more. No more. Let's talk about fishing or anything, please. <laughs> hey, Sarah. Normie's slowing down again. Norm, you all right? Yeah, I'm actually starting to like it up here, you know? Hey, did you guys see the view? Come on. So what do you think? 
50 bucks for the biggest fish. You make it a C note, and you got yourself a deal, big time. Yeah, yeah but I want to see the lure first. Yeah, I'll give you a lure right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I'm out of shape. Hey, this is, is this thing safe enough to step on? Right. Make this now, this is here. Right huh? Holy oh, shit! What in the wide world of sports is that thing? That thing, gentlemen, is gonna take us across this gorge. That's it? That's it. We'll die. Hey, relax, okay? I've been on one of these things before. Oh, yeah, here we go. No, 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 I'll tell you something. Yeah, tell me, tell it's me. It's worse than it Yeah, was. tell me, Big Ben. <laughs> what, what is it that you haven't done? Oh, oh, I'm back, you back Mars, please. Maybe? Hey, I'm a fish before. Yeah, yeah. Gentlemen, yeah. gentlemen, yeah. please, yeah. gentlemen, yeah. let yeah. us yeah. apply yeah. logic here. Let us simply ask ourselves if this trip is genuinely Come necessary. Come on, stop whining. What's the big deal? Let's just do it. There you go. Now you guys, you, you don't have to do this. This is supposed to be a fun trip, not hell night. We can trek down the gorge and go down river a couple miles, probably only set us back a day. No, I'd rather die right now than miss a day. He's right. I guess. Hold on to that real tight, will you? I'm gonna go across with one of you and show you how to do it. And the others come across in two. So who's gonna take the big plunge with me? Well, when you put it that way, I'll I guess. go. Ooh, yeah, I guess, uh, I guess he goes, huh? Is that okay? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's because if hey. I don't go right away... Fine. Okay, great. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, okay, what do we do now? Now we let gravity take over. Right. Let her rip. Oh, 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 <laughs> I want to go back. Ready? I want to. I don't want to be. You're fine. See? You're doing real Can good. You stop it. Sure, if you want. Whoa. Oh. This is worse. This is worse. Pretty exciting, huh? Yeah. So it's a plane crash. Hey, Norman, I want you to do something for me. What? I want what? You to turn around and take a hold of this rope with both hands. What? I want you to start pulling hand over hand. Uh huh. And I want you to focus on that okay. side. Okay? Okay. That's good. I guess? Norman, you don't have to I push guess? yourself. There's a rhythm to things out here. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just, uh, it's just fine. a little You're nervous. Fine. I'm I sorry. Know. Well, we're almost there. A little more. A little more. Oh, God, we're over land. Thank God. Here we okay. go. Take hold of the log there at the end. Okay. Good. Yeah. I'm gonna go over and help the others. Okay. When they come back, I want you to give them a hand out, okay? Yeah. Sarah? Yeah? Your boyfriend. How does he feel about you being out here alone with the five of us like this, huh? Well, it's not really up to him, is it? Uh-huh. I've always been pretty good at taking care of myself. What do you think's the matter? Look, that basket's supposed to be in the middle, and the rope's cut. Take it easy. Anybody could have doubled back and done that. That doesn't mean anything's happened to Sarah. Yeah. What are you doing? I'm going over to get the basket. Oh, shit. Get your pack off. Put your gloves on. Take this rope, feed me the slack. When I get in the basket, pull us over. Got it? Got it.
Mountain men do this kind of shit a lot. Every damn day. Thanks. Hey, you all right? That arm. Let's push on. No. No, you. You need some more rest. No, I don't. I need some more rest. I 
gotta hand it to you. It's good. Yeah? Yeah, it's really good. It's not oysters on the half shell, but it... <gasps> no. What? I'm supposed to be meeting my girlfriend right now at Donatello's. <sighs> Three days. <sighs> Three days? To the nearest telephone. <sighs> I'm dead. I don't sweat it. She'll understand. Oh, forget it. Over and out. Let me cut you some more. We got a long day tomorrow. You better keep up your energy. <sighs> Three days to a telephone. How do you stand it out here? You gotta try it sometime. Might do you some good. Couldn't do it. I'm big city. Well, tell me something. What would you miss besides telephones? Everything. Activity, action, theater, and music. Getting a good meal at four in the morning. Everything. Uh, I don't suppose you've ever eaten this before either, have you? Mm hmm. They say rabbit in lots of places. Yeah, maybe, but that ain't rabbit. Then what the hell is it? Marmot. Marmot. What's a marmot? A rodent. A rodent? You mean a rat? Sort of a big hairy rat, I guess, yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> hey, I know how you feel. Me? I think oysters taste like snot. Oh, shit. Did you guys think I was a bear? Bear my ass. <laughs> bear, bear. Bear? bear? But come on, we're not stupid. They always think I'm a bear. Born on the mountaintop in Tennessee. Tell him a bear when he was only three. Tell him a bear when he was only three. He killed them a bear when he was only three. Just gave Okay, you guys, I want you to be real careful in here. It gets kind of tricky. Don't be embarrassed if you have to hang on to tree branches or rocks, okay? Here's Mommy. Whatever you say. Hey, Benny, this isn't the right way. What a view. Hey, Steve. Tell me that we're lost. I'm gonna turn, turn my shoe, okay? Yeah. Well, I'm really starting to like it up here. Yeah? I didn't think I would, you know? I just came up here to get away from my ex-wife. Actually, I'd like to have her up here with me right now. One little <laughs> shove. <laughs> Save me about, what, 79 alimony checks. Yeah, yeah. Ah! Ah! No, 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 no! Oh! Don't get ah! 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 Get your feet. Don't look down. Don't look down. Norman, look at me. Help me. Steve. Okay, calm down. Get out. Do what I tell you. Get your breath. Reach in that crack. Give me that gun. No. What? 
help me, God damn it! I am gonna help you, Ned. Just do what I tell you, all right? Reach in that crack and hand me the gun. Uh, uh, come on. Now give it to me. Come on. Where the hell did this come from? It came from my back. I'm a cop. Now, come on. Uh, good boy, good boy. All right, now take it me. easy. Help me. Grab my wrist. Come on. Uh, okay. All right. Come on. Here's go. Good boy. Come on. Come on. One more. Ready? Ah! What the hell happened? What the hell happened? Look out! Look out! Don't move! Help me! Look out! Frank, what happened? happened? It's Norm. He just, he just went over. He what? Norm here and he fell. Where? I don't know. Did you see him? Oh, oh my God. God! Get back from the edge. Steve! Harvey, run! Jump. Jump! I'm sorry. Stop it! Stop it! Take it easy! It's over! Calm down, Sarah! Calm down! It's over! Understand? Just calm down. Calm down. I'm not gonna hurt you. Understand? Okay. I need you. Understand me? I need you. You have to get me out of these mountains, all right? Okay. Okay? All right, good girl. Let's go. There you go. Yes, forget this happened, all right? Just forget this happened. We'll just go on like before. You're the guide. I'm the customer, all right? Okay. Go ahead now. Zero four seven calling Bishop Falls. Zero four seven calling Bishop Falls. Zero four seven. Do you read me, Sam? Sarah, Sarah, is that you, Sarah? Sam? Oh my God, Sarah. I'm trying. I didn't try anything. Thought you might be thinking about it. Listen, Sarah. There's a storm. One hell of a storm. It's here now and it's coming your way. Now you and your party need to stay there in the hut. You understand me? Tell me you want to make one more day of travel. I want one more day of travel. Stay put. Sarah, listen. Don't do that. Don't do that. You wouldn't be upset about a storm. Ask him what's wrong. What's wrong? You wouldn't be upset about a storm, Sam. Big storm. This is a very serious storm we're talking about, Sarah. At least five inches of snow. Tell me you're alone so we can talk. I'm alone. Miss Fresnel, this is Special Agent Manelli of the FBI. One of the men in your party is an imposter. He's a fugitive wanted for kidnapping and murder. He's armed and dangerous. Do you understand? Understand? Yeah, I understand. Sir, Jonathan's coming. He's leading Stanton, the FBI man up there. He's about two days behind you, we figure, but with the snow... Coming, who knows? Now, stay close to the lodge and that radio, Sarah. That's a hell of a storm front that's coming in. Okay, Sam, I will. Okay, Sam, I will. Well, was she under duress? Well, she sounded kind of strange. I'm not sure. So who's Jonathan? Boyfriend, sir. Is that your boyfriend?
dead. Washed down the river. No. If he knew the mountains, he would have gone alone. He doesn't, so he needs a guide. Come on, she's still alive, and we've got to help her. Sarah's handwriting. What the hell does this mean you ought to know me by now? Take it easy, Knox. Just take it easy. What did this guy do? You said it was extortion and murder. It was. How do you like this? That wasn't all it was, was it? No, it was. Well? He had a hostage in San Francisco. A diamond merchant's wife. He killed her after he got the diamonds. Just to make a point. What point? That I shouldn't have interfered. it up so now you want revenge and she's gonna get killed for it you listen to me that note is right i am getting to know this guy he'll only kill a hostage he has no use for understand me so long as you and i stay tight on his ass sarah will stay alive now let's get some rest we'll catch up with them tomorrow go get your pack They already got a hell of a head start. Now there's only two of them. They'll move faster. Then we'll move faster. Two, three days, they'll be at the border. You said yourself that he'll kill her as soon as he doesn't need her. That means I got to get to them before they get to Canada. We'll get them before they get to Canada. Wait a minute, Stanton. You're already exhausted. It's cold, and it's going to get colder. There's a storm moving in. Understand? I'm not afraid of a storm. You dumb bastard. You could die up there. And if not that, you'd slow me down so much that Sarah'd get killed. So you got one choice, and that's to stay here. You go with me, or you don't go at all. Bullshit. You're not gonna shoot me. You ever killed a man? You ever break up a bank robbery? I'm 22 years in the FBI, Knox. I've come up against the Mafia, the Ku Klux Klan, the KGB. Understand me, I'm qualified to go after this guy. You think you are, but you're not. All right, I'll take you. But you better keep up. Because if you slow me down and Sarah gets killed, I'll kill you. Sarah, slow down. Stop. Sarah, wait. Wait.
last hour. You'll be getting farther and farther ahead. What's the matter, Sarah? Me across the border. I'll give this to you. You understand me? I'm giving you this. If you pull any of that shit again, and I'll kill you. Name, say your name. All right, Stanton. Every time you lose your wind, you stop. You say your name. Got that? Whatever. I'm too tired. Remember my name. For Ten bucks. I'll remind you. Stayed in that cabin while you had the chance. I'm gonna have to go up the rock face and then up through a chimney to the top. That'll save at least a day. They'll keep to the valleys to avoid the storm that's coming in. I gotta go over the mountain and right through the storm. So when it gets dark, get in your bag, get under my poncho, say your prayers. You'll be okay. When I get to the border, I'll send some guys for you. Stubborn son of a bitch! Can't you listen to common sense? Tie my rope around your waist, and I'll lower you down. Wait, uh, what are you trying to do? Kill yourself? Tie it around your waist, I'll lower you down. No. I'm coming up. You're crazy. I'm coming up. Why? Go ahead.
I can't! Good. Are you gonna tie on? Are you gonna lower me down? Yes. No! How the hell with you then? I'm going to Canada. Knox? about going back down, Stanton? No. I want to go up! All right, you pig-headed bastard. I can't argue with you all day. Tie it around your waist and I'll bring you up. How do I know you're not gonna lower me down? Because I said so, you son of a bitch! Now tie on while I'm still in a good mood! Push up while I pull. Man, like this. What's all this smoke? You sending in a signal or something? The wood's wet. It's gonna smoke. Yeah, we're not gonna have any fucking fire. How about that? You don't want a fire? Fine. We'll have sushi. Mm. You want some? You gotta get out of these. Your belly's ice cold. Get out. What? 
What's your problem? You heard about us country boys, haven't you? Jesus, you smell. Do I smell like that? Huh. Oh, yeah. Weather looks better. I think we should be able to make up some time. Thanks for helping me. I don't mention it. How do you feel? How do I look? My great-granddaddy was 87 when he died, and I'll always remember seeing him in his coffin. So? Well, he looked a damn sight healthier three days dead than you do now. <laughs> <laughs> Never. I've never seen a grizzly turn and run like that before. Hell. Everybody else around here act like they've never seen a black man before. Why should the bear be different, eh? Sarah. Which way, 
freeze up there in that snow. I could left you hanging on that rock face, you know that. Gentlemen, we have two new reports. A motorcycle was stolen from behind the high school and $300 missing from the till at the Crown Market. Now, I know it doesn't sound like much, but you never know. Uh, we're about to go check out the market. Mildred, we're very, very busy here. They broke into my house. The kitchen is an absolute pigsty. I'll get someone up there as soon as I can. I promise, OK? Thank you. Excuse me, ma'am. Exactly what happened in your kitchen? Inspector, could you check to see if there were any long-distance phone calls made from this number? I don't think there were teenagers. What teenagers are going to drink just milk and Cokes when there's also beer in the refrigerator? On that side, the table and the utensils have been wiped clean. Over here, prints everywhere. Why? The suspect brought Sarah here. Rope fibers. He tied her to the leg of this table, sat over there where you are, and ate. There was a call, a Vancouver number, 9260484. Bingo. Stanford. 
Superintendent Shu. I hope my men have taken care of you. Oh, it's been wonderful. <laughs> I just about forgotten how. Go to Hashawa Fields. Uh, hey, Good. This is Mr. Jonathan Knox. Mr. Knox? Thanks for the clothes. I promise you'll burn these. You bet. We just finished interrogating the man the phone call was placed to. His name is Fournier. He lives out in the British properties. Very expensive neighborhood. He's a diamond broker. You're saying he's a fence. What's up? We've never been able to prove anything. He claims the call was a wrong number. Phone company said the call lasted 19 minutes. Yeah, we know he's lying. Here's Fournier now. Superintendent. I'm so concerned about that poor girl being held hostage. I'm very sorry I can't help you. But I would like to know how everything turns out. Isn't that a fine man? He and I have just been to see your boss, Inspector Shu. And I think we made our point, which is that if you ever bring my client down here and this kind of chicken shit questioning again, I'll sue the whole fucking department. Understand? Makes sense to you? Uphold the law and all that? Why the hell are you letting him walk? We have nothing on him. No grounds for charges. We'll keep him under surveillance. I'm sure your men will come up with something. We appreciate everything, Superintendent. You're just gonna let him off the hook, aren't you? Look, the police are doing everything they can. Oh, stop. Yeah. Look, mister, you may be some hot shit guy back on your turf, but you're in my territory now, so sit back and enjoy the ride. Diamonds back. The guy who stole them is meeting me tomorrow. Robson Square, noon at the skating rink. Okay, okay, 30 seconds. Let's go. Okay. He's the one you want, not me. You can have the diamonds back. Just turn off the timer. Diamonds, Mr. Fournier? What are you doing here? We received a phone call. They said there was a break in.
What do you think that? That's the kind of move this bastard would make.
Let the girl go. Fuck you. Come on, Stan. We've both been here before. She tried to play games last time, got a woman killed, remember? This time you do exactly what I say, or I'm gonna have to kill another one. Now go over the side. You shoot her, you're dead half a second later. Stan, I'm serious. So am I. You want to die? Go ahead and shoot. I'll do it. Let her go or die. That's the only deal you've got to make. guys do this kind of shit a lot every damn day 